All right, let's look at question three. Question three says, overnutrition occurs when there is an excessive intake of dietary energy, resulting in overweight or obese people. The double bar graph below shows the percentages of children in two age groups who are overweight or obese in South Africa. The following descriptors have been used, male, female, urban, and rural. Okay, again, don't spend too much time on the graph, but make sure that you can identify the different categories. You know that this is percentages and you've read the key, okay? Students often don't read the key and then they give the wrong insights. You don't wanna be one of those students, okay? Let's now look at the next question or the first question technically. Okay, use the graph above to answer the questions that follow. So we're looking at this graph and it says, identify the only descriptor where the age group five to 17 years old are fewer than the age group under five years old. Okay, so here we can see it's above, right? Because this is five to 17, that's below five. Uh, here it's above, here it's above. Here's the only one where it's below. So it's male, okay? Now, basically what that says is it's saying, well, what happens is that obesity generally increases with age, right? So um, you see here that you have overweight children and it's very highly likely that they'll be overweight when they're adults, but they'll also be like a group of uh, children that will join them as they put on weight as they grow, right? So for 3.1.1, right? And I think with questions like this, it's always important just to stick to the question because sometimes there's so much information that students just want to put so much information. Just go with what's asked, okay? Determine the difference in percentage of the two age groups for the female descriptor, okay? So basically it's saying, what is the differing percentage between this age group and this age group? Okay, this is five to 17, this is below five. So not a difficult one, 21,5, where do we get that? Those are my labels. Mine is 11,1. Okay. These are percentages. So you're going to have to put your answer as a percentage. But you remember, you don't have to put units into your equations. Not needed. Okay. So what is the difference? It's 10,4%. Okay. Here, if you don't put your percentage sign, you would get, um, an, you would get a mark off there, right? Um, because it's important that you actually show what it is that you're talking about. Okay, 3.1.3. Come, oh, not come, compare. <laughs> compare and comment on the urban and rural descriptors of the two age groups. Okay, so basically it's saying, give a little bit of a comparison between what's happening here. Now, if we look at these two, we can see that for under the age of five, they're kind of the same, right? But over the age of five to 17, urban is a lot higher than rural, okay? And that's what you need to say. That's all you need to say, right? You don't need to be writing essays and essays. So you just have to say under, under five, under five, you say they are almost the same. Okay, obviously write in full sentences. And then we say between five and 17 between the two, right? What do we say? We can say urban is greater, right? Or larger or higher is greater than rural. And that's all you need to say, okay? That's the comparison they asked for. Let's continue. 3.1.4. In a rural school, there are 795 learners in the age group five to 17 years old. Calculate the number of learners who are not overweight or obese. Okay, so what does it say? A rural school. So we're gonna be looking over here. We're gonna specifically be looking over here because it's five to 17. So we don't really care about the under five-year-olds. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, well, if 16,3% are overweight, okay, if we are saying 795 is 100%, right? So I'm going to take 100% and minus or subtract the students that are overweight. So this is the percentage of students that are not overweight. Happy? So then you say, okay, well, 
seven percent and you're going to times it by 795 because you say 83,7 percent of my learners are not overweight and my total number of learners is 795 now obviously i can't so so we're going to say here let me just make sure i'm writing this down as we're going um times 795 equals 665 comma 415 okay now this is a tricky one because then students often say okay well is it 6695 students that are not overweight or is it 666 students that are not overweight they would actually in the memo right they would accept either i would say just do a normal rounding right in this case and you would say well 665 students right students sorry are not overweight if you said 666 that's okay depends how you rounded it but just make sure that you are um making making it clear to the examiner what it is or how it is that you are processing the question okay let's move on to the last question of this sub question within question three it says determine the probability as a fraction so it's important you can't just write it any way you want you have to write it as a fraction of randomly selecting a female so we're looking at the female so where's the females they're over here that's who we're interested in who is under five years old and not overweight or obese okay so we have to say here well the probability that we get a female that is overweight or obese is 11 comma one percent so the probability of getting a, a female that is not overweight or obese, right, is going to be 100% minus 11,1. Okay, so we're going to say, it's very similar to reasoning to what we did before. 100% minus 11,1 gives me 89,9%. Okay, but the question specifically asked us to put it as a fraction. Okay, now this is where students get a little bit iffy. Students want to say, well, it's 89,9 over 100. Okay, yes, that is a fraction, but we don't put decimals at the top of a fraction. So what do we do? Well, we times both the top and the bottom by 10, and that gives me 899. Nine, okay. Um, oh, I actually did this incorrectly. Sorry, that is an 8. I must make sure that I type things in correctly. Let's do that again. See, you mustn't just trust your gut. There we go. Okay. Over 1,000. Okay. So what we want there is we basically want to remove the decimal. Whenever you want to move a decimal one place, you just times it by 10, which is one zero. Okay. Whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. Not always the easiest thing to understand, but that's the fraction you have to display. Okay. Let us move on to the next question. <laughs> 